Here's one more quick example of antiderivatives. Um, I'm going to do one example that shows you it has two different interpretations. Uh, let's look at find f where I know that the second derivative of f is 24x squared plus 2x plus 10. And I know that f of 0, actually no, let's be more interesting, f of 1 equals 5 and f prime of 1 is equal to minus 3. I just got this out of the book, but it's a good problem. And um, this is like one of the problems I did uh, in at the end of the last video, but now we've got we're going to answer different anti-differentiate twice, and it's going to be these two pieces of data called initial conditions that allow us to figure out exactly what the arbitrary constants are. So we're going to anti-differentiate once. So we need a function whose derivative is 24x squared. Well, the derivative of x cubed would be 3x squared, and we need to be 8 times bigger than that. So 8x cubed. What, another way to say it is it's 24 times x cubed over 3. The antiderivative of this piece, that turns into x cubed over 3. And that's our general rule for antiderivatives of powers. You increase the power by 1, and then you immediately divide by the power you just wrote, so that it cancels out when you differentiate. So 24 over 3 is 8. Deriv antiderivative of x, 2x is x squared, so it's x squared over 2 times 2. And then plus 10x, that's something whose derivative is 10. Very easy to write 0 here, because you get used to differentiating a constant and it dies. Well, you're anti-differentiating here. We're saying, what is the function whose derivative is 10? Is 10x. And then plus c, very important. Now, in general, if we didn't have these, this information, we'd have to just leave that c alone, and it would propagate through the rest of the problem. But we immediately say, hey, wait a minute. I know something about f prime of 1. It says when x is 1, so we're going to plug in x equals 1. Remember this, what this means. If it says x equals 1, it's not x over here, it's x here, then that should be equal to minus 3. So let me write that over here. So minus 3 is what you get when you plug in x equals 1. So that's 8 times 1 plus 1 plus 10 times 1 plus c, or in other words, uh, 19 plus c. And so I can solve that. c is minus 3 minus 19, so minus 22. So what we do is we immediately rewrite our f prime before we go on with that explicit c. So now we actually know exactly what f prime of x is. 8x cubed plus x squared plus 10x minus 22. Now we're ready to anti-differentiate again. Our goal was to find f based on information about its second derivative. OK, so now x to the fourth over 4 times 8, that's going to be 2x to the fourth. And if you differentiate that, you do get 8x cubed. Here, we're going to have x cubed over 3, and then plus 5x squared, because it's 10x squared over 2. And you can check, 5x squared, when you differentiate, you're going to get 10x minus. Now that, the 22 now turns into a 20 minus 22x, and we get a new plus c. Now, given that we used the c already here, you might think, ooh, can I reuse that? But it was a temporary thing. We were done. And that's a very common thing. Is the c is just this temporary thing. We solve for the constant. We're done. If we had left this as a letter, if we hadn't had the information to, to specify that, then we would have had to have like cx plus d here or something like that. But we might as well use c here. Now we can use this information f of 1 equals 5. So 5 is what we get when we plug in 1 into this function. So 2 plus 1 third plus 5 minus 22 plus c. Uh, the 5's happen to cancel. There's nothing special about that. Move everything over, and we get uh, 2 minus 22 is minus 20. Moving over, it's 20. And we'll simplify that in a second. OK, so it's 20 minus 1 third. And so that's 59 thirds. So now we're set. Our mystery function, that the only thing we were told about it was information about its second derivative and a couple of values, just one value for the function. 
and one value for the derivative, we nailed it down. This is a very typical thing. If you start out with two derivatives, and you give me the starting value, and this, this x this x here could be anything, and it doesn't have to be the same for both, although it often is. If you just give me one value of the function and one value of the derivative, we'll be good. Okay. So, let me give you another interpretation of this same problem. I'm just going to change the letters and show you how this is really one of the most fundamental problems in the whole world. What we have is find the position function s of s equals f of t given that s double prime of t, well, what is that? That's the acceleration is equal to 24t squared plus 2t plus 10. And that at time t equals 1, we knew the particle was at position 5. So this is initial position information. You tell me where the particle starts, and you tell me which direction was it going and how fast. Initial velocity information, because that's, after all, v of 1. So if you tell me where a particle starts and how, far it's, how, how, how fast and what direction it's going to start with, and then you only tell me, from the rest of time, you only tell me how that velocity is changing, what its acceleration is, I can still predict exactly where that particle is going to be in the future. It's just exactly the same problem, just with different letters. So it's 2t to the fourth plus t cubed over 3. And why is that so important? It's because the, the, law, the laws of physics, um, at least the Newtonian physics, the usual sort of uh, physics of ordinary objects that we're used to, predicts the way it works is it gives gives info about acceleration. It comes from F equals MA. That if you know the force on an object and you know its mass, then you can figure out its acceleration. And very often we have some reason to, to understand what the forces are on an object. Given the knowledge of those forces and the mass of the object, we can figure out acceleration. And then we have to do these two antiderivatives to find the position. And so antidifferentiation becomes incredibly important. And that's a good place to stop.